This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Lois Howard was arrested by Canton police in Cherokee County, Georgia at 1 a.m. sitting on a bench in a public shopping center in front of a Hallmark store. Howard was arrested on a criminal trespass from the Publix, even though she was not on Publix property. It was stated by Officer Leonard that it was believed she was stealing while the stores were closed at 1 a.m. Friday night. Howard is an elderly female. She stated to EMS she was shoved into the back of the police car and suffered several broken ribs. The, those two individuals were at Hallmark, not at Publix, but they were at the Hallmark sitting on a bench. And I believe the Hallmark um, person that was working there called it in saying that they had stolen things from the area before and they were sitting on the bench outside and they just didn't want them around. They were not CT from Hallmark, but they were CT from Publix. I hope I didn't break her ribs. I, I was very careful with her. So we got sent to the Publix for Jerry and Lois. I guess Publix employees were concerned that they shoplift, so okay. they called us out there for them. They were both going to get citations for the city ordinance of loitering because now they're raising suspicion that the store's property is going to get stolen. Howard was then taken to the Cherokee County Detention Center and dropped off in the parking lot of the jail. The jail staff refused to accept her due to her injuries, and there was a lot of chaos and lies past that point. Join me as we gone down this long, winding, and twisting road to discover the truth about what happened to Lois Howard and the officers involved. Right. Today's date is May 27, 2021. The time now is 15, 13 hours. In the room is Lieutenant Rodney Campbell, myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer. This is in reference to an internal affairs investigation interview. All right. Anytime I have any type of conversation with anybody, i got to give you Gary. Um, I don't think that there is any reason... Why I should be, but I think that just to, you know, give everybody a, a nice blanket of coverage, I'll go with it. But do you know what Gary D is? I'll do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the reason why we're here, um, I'm not sure if you're fully aware. If you are, I, I still like to cover everything so you have a better idea of where I'm going with questioning. But Officer Leonard is currently under an internal affairs investigation for unbecoming conduct and unsatisfactory performance. On May 21st at 1.17, 1.18 in the morning, she and Officer Overbay transported Lewis Howard to the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office, um, where they were sequentially refused admittance, I'm sorry, Lewis Howard was refused admittance into the jail due to a medical uh, reason, possible broken ribs, um, swollen ankles, other things like that. At that point, Officer Leonard um, becomes unprofessional, uh, starts making comments as the fact that they are going to drop her ass off at the front of the jail, that this is bullshit, it's another bullshit reason as to why they're, you know, refusing her. Um, the sergeant there attempts to talk Officer Leonard out of dropping Miss Howard off at the front of the jail on several different attempts. Uh, he fails. She still reiterates that's what she's going to do. Unfortunately, due to the body cam footage cutting in and out uh, by their own ability they're turning them on and off on and off it's really hard to see some stuff um but they do actually go and drop her off at the front of the jail and from there ems ends up going out with her so on and so forth now um i know it, it to my knowledge uh we have footage of her doing this one other time as far as dropping a arrestee off at the front of the jail it is my understanding um that this previous incident was with a male who uh, had ingested meth, had high blood pressure, the jail refused him either because of the high blood pressure or because they didn't have medication for him. Um, he requested to be dropped off at the jail. Uh, they did. Someone came and picked him up, broad daylight. It wasn't at midnight like the situation was, but the situation did occur. At any point, did you tell Officer Leonard that she could no longer drop arrestees that are refused by the jail off at the front of the jail just just for sheer, you know, fun? I can't put a date and time on it, okay. but it wasn't too long ago. Okay. And I was coming back through the squadron. She was at the computer typing a report. And she made a statement. I think she's having a conversation with somebody. I don't even know who else was there. And she said, I'm just going to start dumping them in front of the jail. 
when they're refused. And I said something this to the, shields of shame. I don't know my exact words, but I said you need to be careful. If it's a medical reason, they got to go to the hospital. It's no big deal. Walk them in, check them in. It's their, you know, you're releasing them there. If they refuse treatment at the hospital, then they refuse treatment at the hospital. But if it's medical, I said, now other reasons, if they want out, then let them out if it's in a reasonable distance. Okay. All right. Um, are you familiar with any other time that she may have dropped someone off at the front of the jail? Maybe I, not for a medical reason, but any I, other time other than this one? I was not familiar with the mail until yesterday. Okay. I didn't know about it. Okay. All right. Um, is this common practice for other officers? Have they been dropping off uh, no, ma'am. arrestees at the jail? Okay. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, and I do have another question. These body cameras. I know that at some point we were having issues with the batteries, uh -huh. that they were not lasting. At any point, was there any instruction given to them that if they walked away from the scene, got in the car to turn them off or to turn them off when someone's being transported or to turn them off when they the go only, to jail? The only instruction we've ever been given, and this in years past, was not in relation to the battery, but in relation to the download time. Okay. And uh, Mark Gavala has said if you're on a scene that's taking up a lot of time, okay. you know, make the announcement that you're going to turn your body out, body camera off for a short intermission. So you can break the video up so it doesn't take as long to download. Okay. Do you know if it's common practice for them to transport with their body cameras off? Body cameras, I really can't speak of that. Okay. But But uh, in-car and rear camera should be on. Okay. I don't see why your body camera would be on driving the car to the jail when you've got the rear-facing camera. Okay. Um, as far as going into the jail, is it common practice to have their camera on when they go into the jail? Or I know that a lot of times when you turn it off and then you get to the jail, you don't yeah. really think to reactivate it. I don't go to the jail much. Okay. But the only thing I have given direction for mm -hmm. is at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Once you clear the emergency room and you go past the double doors, okay. just to protect the privacy of all the other patients that may or may not be decent at the time. Okay. To make sure they have... All right, I turn off. Okay, um, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Um, is there anything else, and I always like to ask this, but is there anything else that you think may be pertinent or information that I need to know that we have not covered or I, not, I have not asked you that you may want to share with me before we end this interview? I've thought about all of it, and uh, the chiefs even made statements, you know, pass on at roll call that being the jail refusing somebody is not the end of the world and they're still doing their job they're still making the arrest you know don't take it personal and again I can't give you dates but we've said that you know to both the rotations on night shift uh, when you spoke about uh, Sergeant Ayers calling me I mean I looked at that conversation to get the time, but we talked for like 30 minutes. And it was all about how we would look at it Monday, yah, yah, yah. And he didn't understand why she would do that. Okay. Do you know, and, and just to, to reiterate this, do you know if at any point, so, okay, so there was some radio traffic when Lois Howard went out with fire and EMS in that animal shelter, par shelter parking lot. It's my understanding that at some point Ayers had a conversation with Officer Leonard about downloading her body camera footage. Do you know if that, that conversation was had before the ADC contacted him or after? Is there any way you could possibly know that or not? I do not know. Okay. No. Uh, just one second. I do not know what kind of pertains to that is our conversation and like I say it was four in the morning but he did talk about something about either because I was like 
if my recollection's right, I asked, did you watch the body cam? Mm -hmm. And he was either said, you know, it hadn't downloaded or it was slow. And we were having issues with the EWI being slow at the time. Or I can't remember if it was Sergeant Ayers rotation or Sergeant Lilly, mm -hmm. but there was a weekend where you couldn't watch videos. Right. And that that's on me. I just don't remember. I'm just making it up for myself. But there was some reason that he couldn't watch the video. Okay. I remember that. And I told him, you know, we'd have it Monday. Uh, I know with long camera uh, downloading, is it possible that they would have left their cameras here to download and went home? No, because, I mean, we're instructed to keep our body cameras with us. Okay. Now, um... Because I know that was right around their shift time of ending. The okay. battery thing, they could have left it. Okay. You know, because it has been going down, but Mark's replaced a lot of the batteries. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that really are, I think, Corporal Harris's would not gain over 9% of battery. Wow. Okay. But, uh, I mean, they could have just not downloaded them. Okay. I guess it depends on if they came here before they went 10 7 or if they went. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Can you look at the, I keep saying EWI, I mean the body worn can. Can you look at that system and see when it was downloaded? I have not been able to, to figure that part out yet. I don't think you can. I've looked, but I haven't found anything that would lead me to think, think that that's when it. It'll tell when it occurred, but I don't think it'll correct. tell when it came in. Correct. I can see if maybe Gavala has the ability to see that, but at this time I, I, haven't, I haven't put that far into it. So. Um, Okay. Well, that's I, all. I will say this. Mm -hmm. I do not see Sergeant Ayers telling her not. I don't see him t not telling her not to do that. Right. I understand that. Um, but, and I completely understand it. At the end of the day, though, he is a supervisor and he has to be held responsible for yeah. the failure to handle the situation when it occurred if he was made aware of it. And even if he wasn't made aware of it at the initial time that it occurred, was he aware of it there Before shortly the after? Time. Correct. Where it could have been remedied or he could have made contact with her because at the end of the day, that's just... And there's some other things to it. So, um, but, okay. That's all I have for you. Is there anything else? You want to... Okay. All right. Time now is 1524. This is the end of the recording.